Henry V ruled England from 1413 until his death in 1422. He is one of England's most popular kings, famed for his victory over the French at the 1415 Battle of Agincourt during the Hundred Years' War with France. Henry V is remembered for his military abilities and is the subject of a late 16th century play written by William Shakespeare, yet surprisingly little is known about Henry V. Was the king a good leader and how did Henry V die? Henry was born in August of 1386 or 1387 at Monmouth Castle on the Welsh border. His father, Henry of Bolingbroke, deposed his cousin Richard II in 1399. The younger Henry became Prince of Wales and spent eight years leading armies against the rebellious Welsh ruler. In 1403, Henry fought alongside his father against their former ally Henry Hotspur Percy in the Battle of Shrewsbury. During the battle, the younger Henry was hit in the face with an arrow but was saved by the daring surgical removal of the arrowhead. After Henry's father died of an illness in 1413, the 26-year-old prince was crowned King Henry V of England. His coronation ceremony took place in Westminster Abbey and the snow that fell that day was interpreted as a sign that difficult times would come. On the domestic front, like his father, Henry V faced criticism and conspiracies from both former friends and longtime enemies who rejected his legitimacy and wanted to place Richard II's heir, Edmund Mortimer, on the throne instead. Henry V set sail to France in 1415, just two years after his coronation. At the Battle of Agincourt, now one of the most legendary battles in English history, the massively outnumbered English force defeated the French due to the expertise of their longbow arches and the luck of the weather. The incessant rain turning the battlefield into a sea of mud that the French soldiers drowned in weighed down by heavy armor. Henry returned home victorious his performance at Agincourt solidifying his powerful position on the European political stage. The Holy Roman Emperor honored him with a visit in 1416. Henry sailed back to France in 1417 and launched a new campaign of sieges, continuing his work on the battlefield. By 1419, he conquered the capital of Normandy, bringing the duchy into English control. These victories forced France to its knees and King Charles VI agreed to the terms of the Treaty of Troyes, which named Henry V as the rightful heir to the French crown, disinheriting the Dauphin. The treaty also betrothed him to the French princess Catherine of Valois, the youngest daughter of the French king. In 1420, Henry and Catherine were married at Troyes Cathedral, Henry and Catherine arrived in England in 1421 and she gave birth to their only son who they named Henry. In the meantime, Henry had already returned to France yet again after the death of his younger brother who was still fighting on French soil. He continued to fight for French territory and engage in the complicated politics of the nation which he was supposed to inherit. In 1421, he led a siege on a French city. The battle was difficult and long. It stretched on for seven months and during the bitter winter, Henry fell ill. He suffered from battlefield dysentery and died in 1422. The son he left behind, though less than nine months old, was quickly proclaimed King Henry VI. The difficult times that Henry V's coronation snowfall foretold came to be with his son, whose tragic reign was riddled with bouts of mental health struggles and the loss of most of the French territories that his father had fought so hard to conquer. Don't forget to write your opinion on the comment section down below and like our video. Thanks for watching.